Hey, if you made it this far in the series, this is part three. Here we're gonna install the sign. My buddy Matt came and helped me, and uh, he was invaluable for this. So thank you, Matt, because I know you're gonna watch this eventually. Um, anyways, uh, it turned out great. It was a lot more work to install it than I thought, but at the same time, it, it went really well. Again, that's mostly thanks to Matt, so thanks, Matt. Um, also, as I mentioned in my last video, I got some stickers for the channel, so if you want one, shoot me your address, and I'd be happy to send you one for free. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, it was a fun build, man. I really loved it. And uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you, or I'm going to kind of do a little recap on what I learned and what I would do differently and all that stuff. Because for me, that's a big part of this is learning and improving. And I want to share with you my lessons because I learned a lot. I made a lot of mistakes. And I love when people share that sort of thing. So that's what I'm trying to do with all of you. So thanks again for watching and uh, stay tuned for the install. All right, so here Matt and I, we are uh, just loading it in the truck. Pretty self-explanatory. We used a furniture blanket to keep it from getting too dinged up because it was really soft wood. Literally, you look at it wrong and there's a ding there. Now here we actually just decided to hook it onto the frame because it was going to keep it from sliding around and getting damaged. And uh, happy to say that that worked out perfectly. Some buckets for the dirt. Got a big level and some tunes there. Milwaukee 18 volt radio, love that thing. Alright, so we unloaded at the church and then we went to Home Depot to get some fast setting concrete, which uh, is actually pretty cool stuff. I went by the uh, calculator on the Quickcrete website and uh, they suggested we needed more than we needed. Shocker. Now here we're just getting it started. We had to dig some th through some vegetation and all that stuff, but it ended up working out. Uh, big props to Matt. He's the one who really knows how to do this sort of stuff, which you wouldn't think is a skill, but actually really is. Um, hitting it with that heavy digging bar really helped just to break stuff up and then take it out with that post hole digger or with uh, a shovel. If I was going to do it on my own, I was just going to bring a shovel and a post hole digger, and that would have been a mistake. That would have been a lot of work. And here we hit it with the level, and it was spot on the first time. We were so stoked. Hence the high five. Again, this is really a... Uh, Matt's territory to compare to my lack of experience here. That was the kind of the deal I made with his mom when she asked me to make the sign was that uh, he had to help install. He's always down to help anyways, but uh, yeah, that was kind of the deal. Cool thing about this quick set concrete is you don't have to mix it ahead of time. You can pour it in the hole pour water down in there, stir it up a little bit, pour a little more concrete and water in there and it worked out really well, super strong. So now after the concrete set a bit, we've covered it back up with dirt so you don't really see it, which is nice. Vegetation will probably grow back in there eventually. Overall, I really dig how this thing came out. Um, I like how the finish was and just, uh, I'm really proud of it. It's good, not perfect, but really proud of it. Of course, we've got to take a picture with our uh, creation there. <laughs> Oh, you gotta do a happy dance, right? Funny part is the pastor walked up right after we were doing that. It was really fun. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. With every project I do, I always learn a lot. So uh, I'm gonna share that with you now. That's what we call this, the learning lab. Hey, cheesy title. Uh, anyways, a couple of bullet points of what I learned. Uh, doing the mortises with a router. Overall, it worked out all right. Um, it's the first time I ever did it, and there were also kind of deep mortises to be doing it in that way. Um, 
and uh, the main bullet points are I would either make or buy and modify the edge guide that I was using, um, buy another one to go on the other side, modify them to make the router more stable or build some sort of auxiliary or something to do that. Um, router stability was part of a problem. The other problem was it was kind of wanting to grab and feed itself and that's kind of how I ended up going past my lines in certain areas. Um, so the other thing is instead of just drawing lines on where to stop the router, I would put some sort of physical stop there. I would either clamp a block there so that the router physically can't go past it or I would make a template out of plywood or MDF or something and use a template bushing in the router so that it couldn't go where I didn't want it to go. Um, so stability and a way to stop the router from going where I didn't want it to go. Those are the main bullet points from there. For the tenons, um, overall I don't know if I'd do that on the miter saw again. If the stock was a little more square that probably would have worked out a little bit better. Um, if I were to do it again I would probably A, try to thickness down the stock for those uh, legs with the tenons on the thickness planer instead of on the table saw. Um, a, my table saw is not super precise and it's not super powerful, so doing the multiple cuts while it worked actually pretty well, um, it wasn't very precise and wasn't very square because the stock wasn't square. Um, the other thing, so I, again, I would do that on thickness planer probably. The other thing I might try instead of the miter saw is to use the band saw for those. I've seen some folks do that and have it work out pretty well, so uh, I'd probably try that somehow. Um, I don't have a huge table for it, but uh, on my bandsaw that is, but I think it might have still worked out a little better than the miter saw, so that's something I might have done differently. Um, with the finish, I learned that polyurethanes and you know film finishes in general are not recommended for redwood, and that penetrating oils are kind of preferred for outdoor use on redwood, so I found that in uh, Australian timber oil from Cabot. Um, seems to work pretty well. The only thing to keep in mind is it's kind of a one-shot deal. You get one one chance. You can't do multiple coats with that, really. Um, so you got to be careful of uh, monitoring your kind of brush strokes because they will dry into it. Other than that, I thought it was a really good product. Actually, I like the color. It was very consistent. It soaked in well. Um, good product overall. Just be mindful that you can only do one coat. Um, what else? Uh, the install. Um, the install was a little uh, a little more work than I had thought, but. Um, I tend to do that sometimes, over or underestimate on time or difficulty for things. Um, but luckily I had Matt with me. Muchos thanks, Matt, again. Uh, he has definitely dug a post hole or two in his day, and so he had all the tools and knew how to use them, and that's why you see him kind of taking over the install portion of things for the most part. Um, a, because he's more capable, and uh, B, because he's more capable. Um, so that was a huge help, and uh, once we got that in there, it was it was great you know it really looked good and we were both really proud of that so um, yeah that was great uh, other than that um, I'm getting started on my next project uh, it's gonna be some power carving I think um, here's a little scrap I just got the power carving stuff yesterday um, that's a little scrap uh, two by six that I had in the bin um, that's what all these guys are I've got a holy Galahad disc and a cuts all burr and uh, some lots of sandpaper um, and uh, I'm going to be making a wine box for my wedding, which is in a little over a week. Um, and before you say, hey, why didn't you start sooner? We just decided like a week ago, so I'm still kind of getting my ducks in a row and figuring out what I want to do. But I have a little over a week, so wish me luck. Um, other than that, like I said earlier, I got stickers. Stickers, yeah. Um, so if you want a sticker, uh, shoot me an email or a direct message, and I would be happy to get one out to you free of charge. Uh, you just got to send me your address. Um, other than that, uh, that's pretty much all that's up with me. So uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you've subscribed, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't, please do so if you like what I do. Um, also, please share this video, like it or dislike it, and leave a comment. Um, all that stuff helps, you know, YouTube's algorithms for putting it out in front of more people. So um, any of that activity really helps out. Um, and, uh, other than that, stay tuned for the next project. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.